Hello, in this program I'm going to show you how to make a white background. That might sound very simple, but actually to do it properly is quite difficult. So I'll just show you what I have set up so far uh, to demonstrate this technique. Here I have uh, a roll of white background paper uh, and I've just laid this out so that it forms a nice sweep uh, and then down onto a piece of wood uh, and I've clamped the front edge of it uh, with these clamps uh, to, the, uh, to the piece of wood. So the subject for today is uh, this vase of uh, flowers uh, which I have uh, positioned uh, on the background paper on this uh, table. So moving a bit further forward, uh, I have uh, set up a camera here and this has a uh, 24 to 70 uh, zoom lens uh, on it. Uh, also on the camera, I have this uh, flash trigger, uh, which not only triggers the, uh, the flash heads, but also controls them. Okay, so in essence, what I'm going to, uh, to do is just put enough uh, light on the background um, so that it's slightly under full saturation. Uh, I'll show you what I mean. Uh, I'll just start up uh, Capture One here and turn on the camera. There we go. Now you should be able to see that um, I've previously set the uh, shutter speed as usual to the uh, flash sync speed for these uh, flash heads, which is a 250th of a second. Um, the camera is set to uh, 100 ISO. And at the moment, I'm using uh, an aperture of uh, f16. And as usual with these things, in order to make sure that um, the ambient lighting that I have in here doesn't affect the, uh, the picture that I'm using, uh, I'm going to take, uh, I'll just do a test uh, without any of the flashes firing. So I'll take the um, flash trigger off the camera and just uh, take a, an image. Okay, and you could, should be able to see there that there is um, very little image. I can just about make out where the background paper is, uh, but to all intents and purposes, uh, that is quite dark. That's easily dark enough. So I'll leave the um, aperture set to uh, f16 uh, on this occasion. Okay, so we'll just pop this back on. Turn this on. It's probably time now just to uh, turn the uh, flash heads on. So I'll just do that on each one. There we go. One doesn't seem to have its modeling light on. There we are. So these uh, have uh, modeling lights built in and the modeling light is actually uh, on at the moment as you can probably make out. With all the studio lights um, it is quite difficult to see just what they're doing um, but we'll persevere anyway. Um, but what I can also do from this uh, flash trigger is control whether the, for instance, the modeling lights are on or not. Um, so I've previously assigned each of these heads uh, to group B. So this is set to group B. So all I need to do is press the uh, modeling button here and there we go. I can turn the modeling lights off from the top of the camera, which is very handy. Uh, I can also uh, decrease and increase uh, the energy uh, for each head. Right, so with all that in place, uh, I think it's probably time just to uh, compose the picture here. So I'll just have a look through the camera. Like this. Okay. So I'm just adjusting the zoom and focus to 
to get it somewhere close. Right. Something like that. Uh, now, obviously, um, I haven't um, set the uh, exposure uh, in any way, so we'll just do a bit of a test. And we can see there that that is um, pretty, uh, pretty undercooked. It uh, needs about uh, three stops, I would guess. Um, so I can add three stops uh, to the uh, energy on each of these heads. Let's move this out of the way. One, two, three. And we'll just do uh, another test. There we go. So that's starting to, uh, to get there. So from this, you should be able to see on these numbers at the top of the screen here, this represents the um, light level where the cursor is. So obviously uh, black would be zero and uh, the highest, um, so if I just go to one of these, would be uh, 256 or 255. So what we're aiming for is to get the background to around about uh, 250. Uh, you want a, a little bit of leeway um, because when I add uh, another light to the front here to illuminate the flowers themselves, then um, some of that will spill over onto the background. And you really don't want it to go over uh, the value of 255. Okay, so uh, what we need to do is uh, just wind up uh, a bit more energy into those lights. So with it set to channel B, Group B, rather. Uh, I'll add another stop to start with and just see how that goes. Okay, so now you should be able to see that this is, uh, we're getting uh, 224, 226. It is relatively even, but still down a little on where we, uh, where we need to be. Um, so I'll add another stop. Like that. Okay, and now we're getting up in the region of uh, 250. I'll add another stop. Now, this one is uh, actually quite interesting because what has happened here is um, we've actually blown out uh, the background completely. Uh, these numbers are a solid 255, just about everywhere on the background but you really don't know how far over that figure uh, you've gone. So what I will do is take that last stop off uh, and then add uh, two tenths of a stop. So we'll take the stop off. And now I'll just add one two tenths of a stop. Just fire that off again. Okay, so now we're at about 251, 252. So I'll add another tenth of a stop. Now we're at 254, 255 in some places. Not bad, I think, uh, for 
uh, for our purposes today, uh, that uh, will do. But you should also be able to notice from the, uh, from the image on the screen that uh, there is quite a lot of spill from these lights. Uh, and it has spilled onto uh, the, uh, the flowers uh, and the vase. Uh, especially if you look in this area here, um, there's lots of uh, highlights. Um, and they are looking very overlit. Um, so, for instance, if I go back to this one, uh, the colours are a lot more saturated here uh, because uh, they're actually a little bit underexposed. So we'll go back to where we are now, which is this one. Um, so to solve that particular problem, the easiest way to do it is actually just to put a reflector uh, on, each, uh, on each light, uh, just so that we cut out uh, the light which is actually hitting the, uh, the flowers. Now, in order to um, demonstrate that, what I'm going to do is turn the modeling lights back on, on these two, uh, two units, and I'll turn the house lights out so you'll be able to see what happens when I put the uh, reflectors on the, on the lights. So first of all, we'll turn the modeling lights on, like so. Uh, and now I'll turn the house lights out. OK, with, uh, with the lights out, I'll use this uh, reflector and just pop it on here. Pop it about there somewhere. And just get the other reflector for the other light. And pop that on there. OK. So what you should be able to see now uh, is that um, we've lost a lot of the illumination on the front of this. Uh, let me just turn the, uh, go back to the normal house light situation. turn off the modeling lights uh, and we'll just uh, run a test so just fire that off okay now looking at the image on the screen here um, two things have happened one is that we've separated the uh, the flowers from the background the other thing is because I've now added reflectors they've become more efficient and if you see, this is all uh, a little overcooked. They're all solid 255 in every position. It's these numbers at the top of the screen you're looking at, remember. So I need to uh, take some energy out of those lights. So I'll start by taking a full stop off, and then we'll go from there. So I'll just take that down by one full stop. OK, and now we've gone to about uh, 250, or there around. So perhaps add a tenth of a stop. I'll add two tenths and see how that goes, actually. OK, so two tenths of a stop. And that's brought us up to about 253, 255 in some places. But not bad. OK. Uh, just to be on the safe side, I'm going to take it down by uh, one uh, tenth of a stop. So you see, it's very small incremental changes uh, that you do need to make. And you can do that with some of the more modern um, speed lights, uh, but it is considerably simpler uh, with uh, Studio Flash. Okay, 
So 253, 254, yeah, that's fine. I think that will do. And again, from this image, you should now be able to see that the, uh, the front of the uh, flowers are actually in shadow, which is what we want. We're going to light those bits separately. OK, so the background is now set. Uh, a lot of messing about, but it is worth it, because uh, when you have fine details like uh, these edges uh, on this, uh, this fern, um, then if the background is overexposed, it will actually burn out the edge uh, and can look a little odd. Uh, so it's much better to, uh, to set this up properly um, for the uh, classic high-key effect, which is what we're trying to, uh, to go for here. So, in order to uh, light the, uh, the vase and um, the flowers themselves, I'm going to use uh, another uh, flash head. Um, this time it will be a Profoto uh, B1X, which is one of their battery-powered models. And I've attached onto this uh, a four-foot um, softbox. Uh, this one's an octobox, but the shape of it doesn't really matter. The size does matter. It does need to be of a uh, specific size uh, relative to the size of the subject so that you end up with a very soft light. So I'm just going to place this about here somewhere. Uh, again, just guessing at the moment. Something like that. And the idea of this is that it will um, illuminate um, just the flowers. Uh, so, let me uh, just drop that down a little. I'm just trying to make sure I've got one of the legs of the tripod, uh, of the stand, the lighting stand here, in line with the, uh, the head. Because these are quite heavy and you want them as stable as possible. Okay, so I'll just turn the power on. go. Right, so looking through the camera, yes that is actually well in the way so it just needs to uh, go up a little more. So I'm just going to take this so that it's out of shot from the camera. Just a little bit more required. That. There we are. Right, uh, so in order to set the foreground light, what I'm actually going to do is turn off the, uh, the two background lights. So I'll just turn those heads off. Uh, and I will turn on that one. There we go. Just test that. Seems to work. OK. Uh, so again, just do a test. Right. And we can see from this that that is uh, very underexposed. Need a bit more energy. So let's just add uh, three stops to that. Like so and do another test. There we are, that's starting to come out. Uh, possibly another stop or two. Let's add two. Like so. Just fire that off. There we are. Possibly a little uh, overcooked. Oh, I don't know though. Not bad. Uh, you should be able to see from the picture it's very soft. Uh, we're not bothered about the background. Uh, all we're actually interested in at this point is uh, the flowers in the vase. So I'm just going to take that down uh, by possibly half a stop. So, 
so. Run another test. There we go, that's better. Right. So with that set, um, what I can do now is turn the other lights on uh, and we'll do a, a full uh, test of the image. So I'll just turn on B and turn the heads on. Test the lock, that seems to work. And capture an image. Okay, so now our background has gone slightly over. Uh, so this is what I was saying before uh, about the additive effect uh, of, of this light. Uh, so I'm actually just going to um, turn down uh, the background lights um, by, uh, I'll take them down by uh, two tenths to start with and see how we go. Well, that's starting to get there. Let's just go down a little more. I'll take another two tenths off. Like so. There. That's not bad. OK. So now at this point, we have um, all the lights set up uh, for this uh, particular uh, still life uh, subject. Um, what I'm going to do now is uh, just show you uh, another uh, technique that you can use um, within Photoshop this time um, to uh, make this a little different. So what I'm going to actually do is, um, using this setup as it all is now, uh, I'm going to take a series of pictures of the uh, vase and the flowers, um, but rotating the vase 60 degrees in between each uh, image. So over six images, it will have gone all the way around 360 degrees. Now, in order to, uh, to achieve that, what I've previously done is, I don't know whether you can see this, um, we've got a pencil line round the bottom of the vase. Uh, and on that pencil line is marked 60, degrees, uh, 60 degree increments. So with the aid of uh, a small amount of blue tack, which I'm just going to attach to the side of the vase, just at the back so you can't see it from the camera view, like so. So now I can turn the vase round by 60 degrees uh, between each shot, uh, more or less. I mean, it doesn't have to be that accurate. Uh, and we can then um, know that by the time we've got uh, six shots done, we've gone all the way around. So that being our first one of these, I'll just put a mark on that image. And now we'll rotate the vase by 60 degrees. Like so. And take another shot. And now again. Uh, just using the pencil lines as a guide. Just take that off and reposition it. Move that round again. Like so. And there we are, back where we started. OK, so now, in here, we have a set 
of images all the way around the bars. So I will export um, these into, uh, into Photoshop uh, and um, show you what the next few stages are. And there we are. So they're all open. Uh, so these are the six images that make up our full rotation. So what I want to do uh, is make all these uh, into uh, a stack of layers. And the easiest way to do that is to go to File, Scripts, and then just come down to where it says Load Files into Stack. And add open files. Since all the ones that I want are open, just check there are six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. And click on OK. OK. So now we have uh, our six images as a uh, set of six layers. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, just add another layer just down here at the very bottom. Just move that down there, like that. Uh, at the moment, this layer is empty. Um, so I'm just going to go over here, make sure that I have black and white selected, and that white is the foreground color. And then I'm just going to use uh, the paint bucket just to fill that layer, like that. Uh, obviously, you can't see any difference because all the other ones are still on, but if I turn all those off, there we have the base layer. So then as I add the other images, they all appear like so. So as this is at the moment, um, one of the things that you can do uh, is basically just change the opacity of all these layers so that they all form um, part of your new image. So if you just select all of them, like so, uh, and then globally change the opacity, there we go, they'll all start to blend into one another. And this can make some interesting uh, effects, as I think you'll agree. Um, but there are lots of different ways to combine these images. Uh, this is a relatively simple method. Uh, if I just take that opacity back up again, another way that you could do this would be uh, to change the blend mode from normal to something else. Um, so darken, for instance, that gives quite an interesting effect, I think. And then with them all still selected, now I'll change the opacity. And we end up with what I think is a very pleasant looking high key uh, picture. So if we just go to the crop tool, now holding the Alt key will make it crop from the center. So if we just do that, go to about there somewhere. Center that. Click on OK. Now, because we've used um, white, what I can do is just paint in um, any bits that are, uh, are missing. Uh, so if I just add another layer, just go to the top, add a layer, and now using my paintbrush uh, with possibly something a little smaller than that, this edge like so I think I caught that corner as well there we are 
Uh, now, should you want to, you can also take the horizon line out. Um, I'm not too sure that I, I would, uh, to be honest. I think I would leave it in. Um, but again, using the same technique, um, or you could, uh, for instance, just using the eyedropper tool here, just pick this grey and use that for your uh, overlay colour, just to get rid of perhaps the uh, shadows there, like that. So there we have it. I think that has formed a, uh, a very nice high key image of uh, flowers in a vase. So I hope that's been some use to you uh, and hope to see you uh, for the next uh, programme. Thank you very much.